I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Columbia, the command module, was a supreme achievement of the technology of its age. It was the most intricate and sophisticated machine ever made by man. These are the first, These are the first astronauts, astronauts to die in an accident directly related to the space, space program. Space. Three Apollo Three astronauts Apollo were astronauts trapped astronauts and killed by a flash fire that swept their moonship early tonight during a launch pad test. Virgil Gus Grissom, Edward White, Roger Chaffee. It should not be a cause for our turning back or having any question of uh, faltering in our progress forward toward uh, the landing on the moon. These three astronauts were aboard their spaceship 10 minutes from a simulated liftoff at Cape Kennedy when the fire hit at about 6.30 tonight. They were inside their spaceship, pressurized, buttoned up inside their spacesuits when the fire hit. Closed circuit television camera was relaying pictures of the astronauts lying on their backs inside the spacecraft to top the two-stage Saturn I. There was a flash and that was it, according to a NASA spokesman watching the television screen in the blockhouse a few hundred yards away from launch pad 34. Top space agency officials are flying to Cape Kennedy tonight to begin the official investigation into what caused the flash fire that killed the nation's first three Apollo astronauts earlier tonight. All died in moments, helplessly trapped inside their spacecraft. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind, and none will be so difficult. The launch vehicle has high radiation power. The launch vehicle has high radiation power. I was sitting at that console right there when Grissom, Chaffee, and White were killed. I listened to them die. That evening, January 27th of Friday, uh, somebody said there had been an accident. It was checklisted, double checked, electronically monitored, computerized, televised, dehumanized of human error. In the late 1960s, as the Cold War cast its long shadow over the globe, the United States embarked on one of the most ambitious and daring ventures in human history, the quest to land a man on the moon. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. That's one small step for man. One this audacious goal, set against the backdrop of geopolitical rivalry, was more than a matter of national pride. It was a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. Yet the path to the stars was fraught with danger and tragedy. On January 27, 1967, a routine pre-launch test turned into a catastrophe, sparked by an electrical fire in the command module, which would claim the lives of three astronauts, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. This documentary delves into their stories, the incident that halted NASA's lunar ambitions, and the indomitable spirit of exploration that refused to be extinguished. Gus Grissom, born in 1926 in Mitchell, Indiana, was a figure emblematic of the early American space effort. A decorated Air Force veteran and a pioneer of the Mercury and Gemini missions, Grissom's journey to Apollo 1 
was marked by his unwavering determination and his contributions to spaceflight. I realize that this isn't a flight to the moon, but if it were, which two men would go down to the surface of the moon? It would be me and somebody else. <laughs> Ed White, the first American to walk in space, brought a sense of boundless possibility to the Apollo program. Born in 1930 in San Antonio, Texas, White's background as a West Point graduate and his achievements in the Gemini 4 mission epitomized the spirit of exploration that the Apollo program aspired to embody. His spacewalk, an image of human triumph against the backdrop of the cosmos, remains one of the program's most enduring legacies. Roger Chaffee, the youngest of the trio, was poised at the threshold of his first space flight. Born in 1935 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, his career was distinguished by a sharp intellect and a profound commitment to exploration. An aeronautical engineer and a naval officer, Chaffee represented the promise of the next generation of astronauts eager to push the boundaries of human achievement. Apollo 1 was planned as the first manned mission of the Apollo Lunar Landing Program, scheduled for launch in February 1967. The mission's primary objectives were to test the Apollo Command and Service Module in Earth orbit, laying the groundwork for the subsequent lunar missions that would eventually fulfill President Kennedy's bold directive to land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth before the decade's end. This crucial first step was designed to validate the structural integrity, operational reliability, and compatibility of the spacecraft systems during a real spaceflight environment. The mission was slated to orbit Earth testing various components of the spacecraft, including its communication, propulsion, and life support systems. The successful completion of these objectives was essential for ensuring that the Apollo spacecraft would be capable of sustaining human life for the duration of the lunar journey and landing operations. The rehearsal event, a plugs-out test conducted on January 27, 1967, was a critical component of the mission's preparation. Named for its procedure of plugging out or disconnecting the spacecraft from all external power sources and support equipment, the test aimed to mimic the conditions the spacecraft would experience immediately after launch. This test was designed to simulate launch conditions as closely as possible without the rocket actually leaving the ground. The setup of this rehearsal was intricate, requiring the spacecraft to be fully integrated with its Saturn launch vehicle on the launch pad. The test was to proceed through the entire pre-launch sequence, culminating in a simulated countdown close to the moment of ignition. This meticulous procedure was crucial for identifying any potential issues that could jeopardize the mission's success allowing for corrections to be made before the actual launch. It's a typical Friday in Cape Kennedy, Florida. Uh, uh, working in the systems right now, getting up to speed, and I think uh, we'll all be looking forward to the flight. The Apollo 1 crew wraps up an exhaustive week with a comprehensive test of the command module. There's always a possibility that uh, you can have a catastrophic failure, of course. This can happen on any flight. It can happen on the, on the last one as well as the first one. So uh, you just plan as best you can to take care of uh, all of these eventualities, you go fly. Needless to say, I'm extremely excited about being named to this flight crew, and I think I've got a couple of the greatest men in the world to work with. It's going to be a lot of fun. Their task, 
to simulate the conditions of space within the confines of the capsule, with the mission's launch date fast approaching. As the day shifts from morning to afternoon, they ascend the launch tower, stepping into the capsule perched atop the awaiting rocket. This phase of testing, deemed non-hazardous due to the absence of fuel, involves sealing the hatch and introducing pure oxygen into the spacecraft, mirroring the actual spaceflight environment. That's about me down, Mark 3. Uh, Don, we're getting ready to pick up on a town here. Uh, are you ready, Daddy? The test commences with ground control and the Apollo 1 team meticulously working through a lengthy checklist. This is ECS. Go ahead, ECS. The hatch door is secured. Roger. Miller bar down and locked. Check. Neck ring locked. Check. Tie down front and back. 25, EDS 1, bad A closed. Uh, EDS 1, bad A uh, is already closed. Uh, Roger, you do not have a launch vehicle guidance flight at this time? Right, I don't have the rate light. Uh, negative, launch vehicle guidance. Roger. Communication glitches lead to delays and mounting frustration. Okay, Gus, you're pretty garbled. Hey, how are you going to get the moon? We can't talk between three buildings. I can't hear that thing you said. This is right. Suddenly, a voltage spike triggers a catastrophe within the capsule's electrical system. Fragmented communications hint at a fire engulfing the capsule. Attempts by ground control to reach the astronauts prove futile. Calls are made to the launch pad crew. Only 17 seconds pass from the initial alarm to a haunting silence. The situation is dire. The fire didn't merely ignite. It detonated with such intensity that it tore open the spacecraft's hull. The ferocity of the flames escalated temperatures to 1,200 degrees, causing aluminum to melt into puddles. This catastrophic event highlighted the severe consequences of the capsule's design vulnerabilities. An electrical short was the fire's catalyst, fueled by the oxygen-rich atmosphere and contained by a hatch designed to seal the void of space, tragically trapping the inferno inside. This oversight by NASA effectively placed the trio in a ticking time bomb. This is a CBS News special report. This is Mike Wallace at the CBS Newsroom in New York. America's first three Apollo astronauts were trapped and killed by a flash fire that swept their moonship early tonight during a launch pad test at Cape Kennedy in Florida. Subsequent investigations highlight a flawed design prone to fire risks due to flammable materials in an oxygen-saturated environment. Within a few hours, an official investigation is underway. Tapes containing telemetry records were impounded. Photographs showing the position of every switch and valve inside the cabin were made. Eyewitnesses were asked to tell their story while it was fresh and then shortly before 2 o'clock this morning, 
Bodies of Grissom, White, and Chaffee were removed and brought down. Just weeks from their scheduled journey to space, the first Apollo astronauts were solemnly laid to rest. With the moon visible overhead and a blue sky traced with clouds, the same moon he had hoped someday to land on, the stage is set for the burial of Virgil Gus Grissom here at Arlington National Cemetery this morning. President Johnson said in a statement, three valiant young men have given their lives in the nation's service. We mourn this great loss and our hearts go out to their families. Because of the tragedy, the Apollo 1 flight has now been postponed indefinitely. In a ceremony marked by military honors, fellow astronauts mourned the loss of their comrades. President Lyndon Johnson offers condolences to Grissom's family, then faces a pivotal decision, the future of the Apollo program. As Kennedy's vice president, Johnson had championed the space mission from its inception. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Following Kennedy's assassination, Johnson's presidency maintained unwavering support for NASA's ambitions. The subsequent investigation unearthed critical issues and oversights within NASA's design and operational procedures, leading to profound changes in the space program. The tragedy, resulting from a combination of a highly flammable environment, questionable engineering decisions, and inadequate safety protocols, became a catalyst for a comprehensive overhaul of NASA's spacecraft design philosophy and safety culture. The investigative panel, convened immediately after the incident, pinpointed the cause of the fire to an electrical spark. This spark, in the 100% oxygen atmosphere used during the ground test, ignited a catastrophic blaze that engulfed the command module in seconds. The oxygen-rich environment, while simplifying certain engineering challenges by eliminating the need for a two-gas system, significantly increased the risk of fire, a risk that was tragically realized. One of the most critical findings was the extensive use of flammable materials within the command module. Items such as nylon netting, foam padding, and even the astronauts' flight suits were highly combustible in the pure oxygen atmosphere. The command module's interior was packed with such materials which contributed to the rapid spread of the fire once it had ignited. The design of the hatch also came under severe scrutiny. The Apollo 1 hatch was designed to open inward and required multiple steps to unlock and remove, a process that could take several minutes under ideal conditions. In the event of the fire, this design effectively trapped the astronauts inside as the hatch could not be opened quickly in an emergency. This tragic design flaw was the result of a harrowing incident during the Mercury program, where the hatch of Gus Grissom's spacecraft, Liberty Bell 7, prematurely opened after splashdown, leading to the craft flooding. To recap briefly, we have had a second successful launching of an American astronaut. Obviously not as successful as the first one because the capsule itself was lost in the recovery operation, but successful in its most important and critical area. The astronaut himself, Air Force Captain Virgil Grissom, was recovered. The capsule had been equipped for the first time with a hatch that could be opened from the inside. 
Now, the controversy was over whether or not he had panicked and decided, I've got to get out of this thing and hit the button, causing this catastrophe, or whether he had blundered and it inadvertently somehow hit the thing, either of which would be a cardinal sin. This incident influenced the initial Apollo hatch design to be more complex and, unfortunately, more difficult to open quickly in an emergency. The investigation also criticized NASA's preparedness for emergencies. At the time of the fire, there were no adequate fire suppression systems inside the capsule, and the ground crew was not equipped or trained to deal with such a rapid and intense fire. The command module's design did not account for the possibility of an internal fire during ground tests, a grave oversight that cost the lives of three astronauts. In response to these findings, NASA undertook significant changes to enhance the safety of future missions. The use of flammable materials in spacecraft construction was drastically reduced, replaced by self-extinguishing and non-combustible materials wherever possible. The pure oxygen atmosphere during ground tests was abandoned in favor of a mixed gas environment which significantly reduced the risk of fire. This change was accompanied by a redesign of the spacecraft's environmental control system to safely accommodate a mixed atmosphere. The hatch design was overhauled to allow for rapid opening in emergencies. Future Apollo missions featured a quick release, outward opening hatch that could be opened in seconds, ensuring that astronauts could escape quickly in case of an emergency. This design change was a direct response to the lessons learned from the Apollo 1 tragedy. Furthermore, NASA's approach to safety and emergency preparedness was transformed. Fire suppression systems were integrated into spacecraft designs, and emergency procedures were updated and rigorously drilled with both astronauts and ground personnel. The culture within NASA shifted towards a more safety-conscious mindset with an increased emphasis on risk assessment and mitigation in all aspects of mission planning and execution. The Apollo 1 tragedy served as a crucial turning point for NASA, driving significant reforms in spacecraft safety, design, and operational procedures. The incident while marking one of the darkest chapters in space exploration, catalyzed a comprehensive reassessment of NASA's approach to astronaut safety and mission planning. The investigation that followed unearthed systemic flaws and led to sweeping changes that directly influenced the success of subsequent Apollo missions. In the wake of the fire, NASA's introspection and subsequent reforms encompassed both technical and procedural aspects. The redesign of the Apollo Command Module to include non-flammable materials, a safer atmospheric control system, and an improved hatch mechanism were not mere technical adjustments, but emblematic of a broader shift towards prioritizing safety. Tonight, we are on the eve of the resumption of this country's push to the moon, a push halted by that disaster on pad 34 almost two years ago. The entire Apollo program has been re-examined, the spacecraft redesigned, with the work done, the attempt to reach the moon, and to get there before the Russians, resumes tomorrow morning with the launch of Apollo 7. Tell me, what do you think about the space program? Well, I'm a little excited about it, and I think I can speak for most teenagers in saying that that we are all excited about it because just about everyone I've talked to is excited. Just the other day, Judy and I were talking to two boys and they said, what did they think we'd probably do when we actually saw someone walking on the moon? And I said, I don't know, maybe I'll just, we'll get up and just scream or maybe just it'll be so exciting or maybe we'll just cry. Following the transformative changes initiated by the Apollo 1 investigation, the Apollo program embarked on a series of missions that would forever change our understanding of space and humanity's place in the cosmos. The program, spanning from 1961 to 1972, 
included a total of 17 missions, each building on the lessons and successes of its predecessors. Apollo 8 took humans beyond Earth orbit for the first time, reaching the moon and returning safely, a pivotal moment that set the stage for the lunar landing. Apollo 11, the crowning achievement of the program, saw astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin become the first humans to walk on the moon in July 1969. This historic mission was followed by five more successful lunar landings, Apollo 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17, each advancing scientific understanding of the moon through extensive exploration and experimentation. The Apollo program, in the wake of Apollo 1's tragedy, emerged as a testament to human ingenuity, resilience, and the unyielding pursuit of exploration. It not only achieved the extraordinary feat of lunar exploration, but also set the foundation for future space endeavors. As we look to return to the moon and journey to Mars, the lessons and achievements of the Apollo program continue to guide and inspire. It's a stepping stone to deeper space. Man has always been plagued with an intense curiosity, and I think we have to go up there and look and see what it is. We need to gather this information before we can go any further. Many years ago, the great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said, because it is there. Well, space is there, and we're going to climb it.